Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, and welcome back to a new video. Lately, I have not been uploading many tutorials. In fact, I've been uploading a lot of the behind the scenes stuff when it comes to design and logo design. And I heard what you guys have said. You want to hear more tutorials and learn more about logo design creation. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. So in front of me, I've got some of these weird icons and I've been working on certain like logos and icons uh, for a specific client I'm working with now. And I thought it would be a cool idea to show you how I come up with these icons, which are kind of like minimalist, abstract, premium icons you can create as a logo and take whatever I do on this and make your own. Now, for someone who's very new to design, this can seem really difficult to do. Like, how do you create the shapes like this? How do you get this line in the middle and how do you change everything on here? Well, there's only a few things that I'm doing throughout this that really matter because the way the Illustrator works now is that we can use the Shape Builder tool instead of the Pathfinder tool. And I'm going to show you how you can use that to create some amazing black and white or colored logo designs for your projects. Let's get into it. So as you can see, these are really simple designs. They're not hard to do. So what I'm going to do is create a new artboard. And the first thing that I want to do is create a square by holding shift. And when I hold shift, that basically keeps the constraints or the angles everywhere the same. So we create a perfect square. If we don't hold shift, we can create like a rectangle. But when we hold shift, it keeps it perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is press shift and X, which is going to change the fill to the stroke. So as you can see over here, now we don't have a fill, but we've got the stroke. And you might not be able to see it very well, but this is the stroke, which is just the line or the stroke outside of the shape. Then we want to change the stroke width. So we want to go up here to the stroke and just keep pressing this button until we get a stroke width that looks kind of all right. So I like mine bold and there we go. We've got a bold shape there. Now I'm going to create a logo from this that is going to be super fun and easy uh, that you guys could create yourselves. And we're going to do that by using something called the Shape Builder tool or if you're fancy enough, the Pathfinder tool. So the first thing I'm going to do is move my square over here to the left. I'm going to press Command and K. And what that's going to do is bring us to the preferences. Now there's a few preferences that you need to know and that is scale strokes and effects should be turned off. And basically what this means is that if you've got it turned on and you bring it down, the stroke is going to scale with your scale. But if we have that turned off, it's going to keep the stroke width exactly the same, no matter how big the actual shape you're creating is, which is very handy for anyone who's working with line work, keeping the same exact thickness of the stroke whilst making the shapes bigger or smaller. So now we've got our shape there. This is our base shape. I'm going to just alt and drag it and hold shift and I'm just going to move it over here. Now we're going to keep doing this through the process because vectors are free and you don't need to pay for them. You can just copy and paste it over there to make sure that you don't ruin your work or you lose track of it. And it's just so you can go back to it easily. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this as sort of like my bounding shape. So I'm going to press command and C to copy this. I want to create some lines in between here and I'm going to create some funky shapes. And by doing that, I'm going to go ahead and make a circle and this circle is going to be like this. I'm going to bring the circle over here actually and make it really small. Kind of like, I guess like that or maybe even a bit smaller. And then we're going to command and paste it or copy and paste it even. And we're going to keep doing this until we get like a nice spiral effect. And then I'm going to put this on here like so. And I'm going to copy and paste this by alt and dragging. Now what we want to do to achieve a cool effect is we want to get rid of this square out here, but we want to fill the square with a shape like this. It's actually very difficult for me to say or to speak this out because it's a very different kind of design or way of doing it. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to move the square here so that this square bit's in the corner right there, something like that. I've got this sort of bottom quarter of the circle here in that, and I'm not worried about anything else on the outside. I'm just worried about what's in this circle here or this square. Square, circle. Next thing I'm going to do is create some lines. So I'm going to press this weird line button or going over to here. And we're going to create a line from here to here. And it should be the exact same stroke width as well. And I'm just going to copy them over. Not, I don't really care if it goes in or out of the actual square. I just want to keep it to the exact same, you know, lines and the weights and stuff like that. I'm just giving it, I'm just copying them. 
making sure they're kind of the similar. And now we've got our logo before we've actually created a logo. Now this is where it's gonna to start to blow your mind a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and copy and paste it again. So we've got a, like a fresh copy. Now what we wanna do is make sure that these strokes are no longer strokes, but they're actual shapes. So we do this by highlighting it, going up to object, going down to path, and then outline stroke. And as you can see there, all the strokes have turned into actual shapes. Now this is where the fun begins. Press Shift and M, and this will bring up what's called the Shape Builder tool. And the Shape Builder tool is basically this tool where you can delete shapes, like in the Pathfinder tool, which you can find up at Window, and then Pathfinder, or mine is over here. And this is where you have like, you know, Unite, Minus, Front, Divide, Intersect, and all this sort of different things that you can do. Well, the Shape Builder tool is basically just that, but a lot easier. And all you have to do is highlight your object, and then using Alt or not holding Alt, you'll get this little plus and minus key or this little plus and minus icon at the side of your cursor when you're on the Shape Builder tool. Now what this cursor does is shows you whether you're going to delete or unite a certain amount of shapes. So by this, I'm going to go ahead and hold Alt and I'm going to delete this part here by just clicking and dragging over like that. And that's going to delete all the circle there that's not inside of the square, if that makes sense. And then I'm going to delete this part here too. Now for all these other parts outside of the square, I'm going to go ahead and delete them too by just clicking on them and dragging. Now I want to go ahead and delete the actual border of this as well. So I'm going to just like literally draw with my minus key like this all the way around like so. And we've got basically this weird shape or logo in the shape of a square right there. Now all these shapes and stuff are basically not together. So if I pull them out, you can still pull them out. And we wanna make sure they're all linked up and just one shape. So we can do this by either going to the Pathfinder function and pressing the first one, which is Unite, and that will unite all the shapes. Or we could go ahead and use our Shape Builder tool by pressing Shift and M or going over here and basically just making them like this, not holding Alt, but making sure the plus icon is there. And that will create the Shape Builder logo. Okay, so that was logo number one. That logo is pretty fun to create, pretty easy, but how do you come up with these wiggly line effects? They seem a bit strange. Well, we're gonna do that as well. So I'm gonna take my square that I had before, I'm gonna bring it out, copy and paste it, and I'm gonna press R to rotate it, hold Shift and rotate it 45 degrees, and that will give us this diamond sort of look. In here, I wanna go ahead and create a line in the center. I'm gonna to go to my line tool. Then I'm gonna go from one end here, holding onto that anchor point and holding shift. We're going to go to the other end like so. I'm actually gonna go ahead and make this a bit bigger as well so it goes out of the shape. Then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna highlight that shape there, the one in the middle, being careful not to highlight the square as well. I'm gonna to go to effect, distort and transform. I'm gonna to go to zigzag. I'm gonna get this little box up here. Now to see the effect in real time, press preview and you'll see there it's all like zigzaggy. Now what we want is smooth. So press smooth and you'll realize that the zigzags are now sort of like curves. Now we can like go ahead and change the amount of things we've got here, like the size of them and everything else. I'm gonna just play around with this for a second uh, to get the optimum curvature that I want, which I'm happy with this. I'm gonna press okay. Now the next thing we need to do again is basically hold these, select them, drag them by holding Alt and basically duplicating them. And I do this just so I don't mess anything up and it's sort of like a little habit of mine. I just keep on making new iterations of the same logo so I know where I went wrong or what looked better. Now that we've done this, we need to go ahead and basically outline the stroke again because now there's an effect applied to this stroke as you can see, because the actual stroke is still straight. So we're gonna highlight both of these, go to object, down to path and the same thing, which is outline stroke. And that's going to outline that stroke. I'm also going to go ahead and edit this a little bit by creating this here. And what this is going to do is give us like basically a middle part in the center, which is what I want to cut out of this logo. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and again, duplicate it. This is going to get boring for you guys, but you just keep duplicating it. So you know you, where you're going with the design. And then I'm going to highlight it all. Shift and M, which is the Shape Builder tool. And we're going to get rid of these outside lines. We're going to get rid of these lines, unite these lines here. And this is going to create the shape. We've just built a new shape. Now this looks kind of weird right now, but you could do a lot of editing to it. For instance, you can like smoothen off some paths. 
we can even like create some more different effects so in here we could use the paint bucket tool to make that part filled or we could go ahead and use this tool here bring this down to create this weird abstract design and you could do a lot now that one there it was a bit strange so we could move on to doing a different kind of one which is this mountain one here now this mountain one here is basically the same as that one which was just using a triangle and using the shape builder tool with the shape builder tool you can literally do anything i could literally have like a circle here we could like make sure it's got the same attributes as that and we could like i don't know create some weird shapes here like so there's like a leaf and then we could rotate this leaf, preview it, copy it, command D, have that, twist to 90 degrees. We could copy that again. This is how quick it is to create like a little icon. We can outline that stroke by deleting and repeating certain shapes and then bringing them all together like that. It's a bit of a strange logo, but you can see how quickly you can create things in Illustrator using the Pathfinder. Uh, option like that well guys thank you so much for watching this video it's been awesome to give you a tutorial make sure if you haven't already to subscribe to this channel which is will patterson where you'll learn more hand lettering logo design and general creative topics and anything you need creative wise and i just want to give a huge shout out to fresh books for sponsoring this video fresh books is an online accounting service that i use to collect invoices to send invoices to keep hold of all of my expenses to know what I've spent in my business and basically to get paid faster. If you're self-employed or someone who works in the freelance industry, then FreshBooks is going to be invaluable for you like it has with me for the past basically two years of sending invoices to clients quickly, making sure you get paid on time by seeing whether someone's actually viewed your invoice, generating proposals and having tax forms at the ready. There's so much you can do with FreshBooks. It gets you paid even faster and my job basically wouldn't function in the account section of my job without FreshBooks. FreshBooks have also been so kind to give us 30 days free of fresh books no risk at all don't even have to put your car details in i don't think just to try it out to see for yourself how good it is click the link in the description below and let them know that i sent you to them because they really want to know that guys thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next video Bye.